One of your notes is about the general election next year in the UK, and the question you ask is, should investors worry? It's a big question. It is a big question. But, but it seems to me they should. I think they should be thinking about it. I mean, particularly, you know, investors should be asking themselves the question, do I need to have exposure to sterling? I think that's one of the most important questions. Certainly the run up to the Scottish referendum made us all realise that uncertainty as far as the outlook for the UK is concerned had an impact on currency movements, actually. So quite aside from all the taxation and investment issues, there's just a simple currency question to start with. So, I, And I guess the key there, if you're investing in equities and companies is to go for companies with big exposure out of the UK, right? I think it is. I mean, roughly 70% of FTSE 100 earnings are outside the UK anyway, so you can argue you're quite well diversified as a UK investor. But if you have a, uh, a portfolio that's very small company and very domestically focused, you ought to start asking yourself a question. Are those companies, do those companies have a sort of sustainable growth trajectory in their own right, or are they reliant on the economic background? Mm -hmm. um, you know, we, we talk about the election, you know, I don't want to get into all the detail because we could be here for hours, but, 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 um, Let's throw the in-out referendum on Europe in there, if the Tories win. Uh, and let's throw the likely fiscal tightening in there as well, uh, higher interest rates in there. Um, and it does become very uncertain, doesn't it? It does. It does. I mean, you know, the, the, the EU referendum, obviously, is something that the Tory backbenchers are pushing for pretty mm. hard. And the, and the UKIP success is clearly building pressure on that. Any run up to that kind of referendum, I think we'd see the similar kind of uncertainty that we had in the run up to the Scottish referendum. Does it actually make it more or less likely that we'd vote to leave the EU? I suspect actually, because of the Scottish experience, we might look over the edge and say, you know, maybe mm -hmm. not. Mm -hmm. But it doesn't mean that there won't be a lot of uncertainty certainty in the run up to it. The, OK, let, let's have a look at some sectors in particular. Um, whoever wins... Uh, whether it's uh, a Labour coalition, whether it's the Tories, um, both have said they want to tackle the deficit in housing in the UK. Yeah. Now, that would seem to be good news for house builders. It would. So you want to be in the house building sector? I think that's probably right. Um, it, certainly, you know, the, at the moment we're only building something like 145,000 houses a year. We ought to be building more like 260,000. There have been commitments from both parties to free up the planning process and, and to just kind of improve the flow through from, from the housing sector. So yes, it ought to be good. What we've got to bear in mind, though, is that interest rates may start to rise. Mm after or some, somewhere ahead of or perhaps just after the election and of course that's a headwind for house builders.